Hello everyone, my name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm in Pune and I'm all set for a wonderful freelancing podcast with none other than Nasi who is known for his freelancing work in DevOps and also a popular DevOps YouTuber. Nasi, why don't you introduce yourself to our subscribers? Hey everyone, my name is Nasi. I go by CloudSham on YouTube. I create content on cloud and DevOps. But my main task is to help clients on their freelancing stuff. So yeah, thank you for having me. Okay, so in this podcast, what we'll try to do is we will ask Nasi questions related to freelancing. And then Nasi will ask me questions about open source so that we cover both the important aspects that you are looking for. So Nasi, first thing is, can you explain our subscribers? How can someone get started with freelancing in simple words and assume they have zero knowledge on it. What are the websites that they have to go for? Mm -hmm. How can they create an account with it? Mm -hmm. Alright, so if you are very new, complete beginner, start with learning something that you want to offer. Okay. So right now DevOps is booming. So try to learn DevOps first. Once you learn DevOps and you can implement things, you can do some stuff, then you can promote yourself on different freelancing platforms. There are Fiverr, the most popular one is Fiverr that I use and I started with. Okay. There is also Upwork, uh, there is also Freelancer, there is also Turing. I use Fiverr and Upwork mostly, okay. but if you're someone who is experienced, although you were asking for student, if you're someone who is experienced, you can also try out Turing.com. Okay. So start with learning a skill, then creating account on these platforms, and then uh, get orders from them, get paid as well. So to create an account, with these platforms. Is there any entry criteria? Uh, assume that someone who is watching this podcast has two years of career gap. Can they go ahead and create an account with this or there is some eligibility criteria? How is it? There's no eligibility criteria. No matter if you have degree, no matter if you have caps. Okay. You, you can sign up on the account. Uh, you can start promoting and telling people that I know this and I can do this for you. Mm -hmm. If they if they're okay with it and they give you the work, you get paid. So there's no criteria. Got it. And you are also talking about uh, Turing mm -hmm. for experienced engineers. Mm -hmm. So how is this platform different? Like, is it similar to Fiverr and Upwork, or how is it different? It's very different from Fiverr and Upwork. On Fiverr, you get small tasks, which could be anything. Maybe setting up a server, or maybe setting up a CI/CD. On Turing, you have big companies, very big companies like Pepsi or BMW and many others. And here you have to apply, like you need to see for interviews and once you get this interviews done, you can then apply for the jobs which might be six months or one year contract, depending on what they're offering you. Ah, okay. So it's like freelancing, but you get to deal with big companies and you also have a set duration of work period. Yeah, it's contract based. Oh, it's good. And one more thing, a lot of people frequently ask me on the channel is how does freelancer get paid? In easy words if I have to put, mm. let's take a two years experienced software engineer and let's compare a two years experienced freelancer. Mm -hmm. How is the parity? Like do they get equally paid? Is software employee get paid more or freelancer get paid more? How does that look like? So it totally varies because in India there are many companies who pay you good. There are some mm -hmm. MNCs who don't pay you good. Okay. So if you compare a person who is an MNC and a person who is a freelancer, obviously freelancer will earn more, maybe double, triple than what the person is doing. Okay. But then it also varies because the freelancer should have skills uh, which people are asking for. So mm -hmm. if they have skills, they can earn more money. If they don't have skills, they might be doing some small jobs uh, which might be very less. So okay. it all depends. But again, there are also many companies or startups who are paying very good to software engineers or to developers as well. Like, uh, I have seen many startups who pay in lakhs for interns or for DevOps engineers as well. Mm -hmm. So it all depends. It depends on how much skills you have. If you have skills, you can make money as a DevOps engineer as well, mm -hmm. as well as a DevOps freelancer. Makes sense. Now this question which I'm going to ask is like, I'm asking you personally, uh, this is not coming from the uh, subscribers because I'm very curious to understand as a freelancer, how can someone keep themselves updated with let's say the software culture or real-time customer issues because if someone starts their career as a freelancer you know you might not have that customer exposure that a software engineer might have right now how does that work 
this is actually a very valid point because if you start with freelancing, yes, there will be a point where you get stuck and you don't start going with your like you don't grow with your skills. Okay. And this is why I don't recommend freshers to start with freelancing in their initial careers okay. because if you start with a freelancing uh, gig, you will only learn few things. Hmm. Maybe knowing stuff on AWS and then you will stop there because you'll be doing this again and again. So okay. if you're a fresher, I would say start with uh, a job, mm -hmm. like do two, three years of job, learn things from problems that you solve in your jobs and then later on you can try with freelancing. For me, I try to learn things on my own, okay. uh, although there's no other option for me. Sometimes I get a uh, good problem that I solve and I learn as well. But if you're a freelancer, try to upskill yourself, yourself. Uh, Makes sense. Yes, yeah, so that's that's that. So this is very important information that Nasi has shared. So if you are a freelancer aspirant, like you want to look yourself as a freelancer in the long term. So first start working in the real environment. Maybe you work for two years, three in year, three years. You get to understand how the real customer environment looks like. You understand the real time challenges. Then probably you go for freelancing where you will be in a much better place. That's true because when I started, I was working for an internship, although I was doing freelancing side by side in my college days as well. Okay. Uh, but the things that I've learned in my internship and my job role has helped me a lot as a freelancer. Okay. Due to these things, I've started getting good clients, I've started get, working on good projects, which make which help me make more money compared to the small job that I used to do in my college days. So yeah. I think job will help you learn things, freelancer will help you make money after you learn more things. Makes sense. because. That also reminds me, in the past I did freelancing for one year that was completely on AWS and when I was working with XYZ person or a client, so I was not given access to their actual environment. You know, I was working on AWS Lambda functions. I used to write code on my Visual Studio code and I used to share them on the Gmail. Mm. So I used to test it on my AWS account, mm. share that code snippet on Gmail. Then they upload it on their account. Again, things don't work. So it's to and fro. This yeah. is actually very true because a DevOps engineer's role is very critical. Yeah. You get access to servers, you get access to databases. Most of the time you don't get access to. Mm -hmm. like, there is there are many clients who only let me see their architecture, okay. don't actually click on it or don't actually operate on it, okay. which is very uh, problematic and it's very time consuming. So yeah. there, there are times where you don't get access and then you might not be able to know the architecture properly, know the mm -hmm. project properly, you might not be able to learn things. So yeah. this is again a problem in freelancing. But it's only for few companies who have compliance issues or uh, many companies who are, who are concerned about the security as well. So this is something very common in freelancing. You have to, right. you have to sit upon Zoom calls for hours and tell a non-tech person who don't know about AWS to click on that button and that button and that button and then you get it solved by like five, five hours. If you would have done it yourself, you might be doing it in like five minutes. So right. this is again a problem in freelancing. So you need to have a lot of patience. Yes, very, very. If it is a non-tech, it's very, you have to have like a lot of patience. Mostly, fans are non-tech. Got it. And also, uh, one more interesting thing probably many people might have not thought about it, but when thinking about long term freelancing, because when I'm talking to you, one question that pops up is where is the definition of time? You know, in software engineering, mm -hmm. we call definition of time or acceptance criteria. Where if I have to close a Jira ticket mm -hmm. in my organization, mm -hmm. I have a definition of time. Mm -hmm. Once that requirement is met, mm -hmm. I can close the item. Mm -hmm. But in your case, you are paid by a client. Right. How you and client, how do you understand, how do you come to an understanding mm -hmm. that a particular task is done? Mm -hmm. Because eventually you also have to get paid. Right. Right? You might have good customers, you might have bad clients. Did you ever face these challenges? Like, you think that task is done, mm -hmm. but client is not paying you. Okay, to be honest. Uh, there are times when customers don't understand that the work has been done. Okay. And this is very common when you, when it's something that can't be shown on the screen. Yeah. Like, not a website that you can show on. Yeah. Right? So I work in different ways. Like if you work in a freelancing, you might be working hourly based. You might be working on a task base. Okay. You might be working on a contract base as well. Okay. Right. So there are many times where I have done the work, mm -hmm. and even though I've done the work, client is not uh, paying me. Right. Okay. And many of the times I have deleted their stuff as well, uh, their databases, which is not something I recommend. But you get freedom on uh, freelancing, and you should not be taking any freelancers' money. So yeah, there are times. But as you said. Uh, if I have to show it to him, 
uh, I try to contact the developer, not the non-tech person who understands stuff. And usually, uh, there are big companies, not big companies actually, big clients who have set up developers, mm -hmm. but not a DevOps or a backend guys. So they okay. hire or outsource stuff like this. Okay. So what you are trying to say, it is important that you also understand whom you are talking to, right? And you tell them in a way that they understand better if you talk to a technical person right. so that you both meet upon the definition of that or I think I think communication and sales is very important if you work as a freelancer okay. because maybe you might be a technical person and you might know everything about everything mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. but if you're not able to convey your ideas if you're not able to uh, convince the person to pay you money mm -hmm. you might not be a good freelancer Got so it. and I think my experience working at a BPO before I joined into DevOps has helped me a lot. Uh, even talking to people, even okay. through my English. So you have to learn basic sales, sales mm -hmm. where you can convince this person to pay you money because he's somewhere far uh, right, and you need to convince him on the first meet. So I try to get my clients on meet first and explain them what I'm going to do, mm -hmm. what I'll be uh, doing them for them. And then if they agree, we start the thing. Uh, I get paid, they get their things done. Now I'll ask you a very, uh, uh, maybe a ma very 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 uh, silly question or a novice kind of a question how does this uh, freelancing uh, platforms work like do you also have a uber kind of a system where you know you read the mm -hmm. person who has onboarded your car and also the rider also gets to onboard the uh, rate the driver so also in the freelancing do you have something like this because sometimes you might find a very bad client mm -hmm. and you know you are done with them and you don't want other people to get impacted. Mm. So do you also have something like that? Obviously. And on Fiverr and also on Upwork, you get ratings for every order you do. Okay. Right? I have tried to make sure that my orders are always 5 stars. Okay. And for this I try to do the task first and then the task is done Then I'll give them order so they're happy and then they give me 5 stars. Uh, right? Okay. And uh, so this is very common and I try to make sure that my ratings are good so I keep getting clients on and on. But then there are also few clients who are not satisfied, so they might also give you uh, less ratings, which might affect your freelancing profile. Got it. Got it. One more thing to add, like you mentioned about Uber thing. Right? Yeah. So, also on the payments part, this is also very common. If you work on a freelancing platform, maybe Fiverr or Upwork, you get paid five dollars. Mm -hmm. Out of this five dollars, two dollars will be of Fiverr, and then oh. remaining will be uh, yours. And this oh. is this cut is also done from the buyer's end and also on the seller's end. Okay. And this is how Fiverr makes money. Uh, but I try to take money on other platforms. Uh, if you're in India, you have options like Remitly, <laughs> okay. you have options like Revolut, you have options like Wise, which supports UPI payments. So I get right. money from USA, UK in two seconds through UPI on my phone pay or my Google Pay. Probably no one is going to share you this kind <laughs> of information. <laughs> so this is a podcast where you are learning about freelancing and you are also getting to understand what are the challenges that Nasi has faced and how do you also can get most of the money that is getting paid to you. Obviously. And do these platforms also help you? Like let's say there is a bad client mm -hmm. and the client is not paying you. Mm -hmm. So can you report to Fiverr or is there a customer uh, support team or something like that? Fiverr is also always going to be on the buyer's side, uh, not the seller side. The person who is giving you order who is the has buyer? more power person who is giving you some task. Okay. I am the seller, I am selling my services. Okay. So if there is any problem with the order, Fiverr is always going to be with the order, Fiverr is always going to be on, in favor with the buyer. Ah. So don't ever try to mess with them. If they are not okay with the thing, just cancel the order uh, rather than getting bad reviews or getting your profile banned as well. Got it. Oh, well, I think I have learned a lot and before I conclude this podcast and let you ask the open source related things one thing that I wanted to understand probably our subscribers also mm -hmm. if you have to explain three to four tools that you get most of the freelancing work in DevOps mm -hmm. like you can probably call it Kubernetes or whatever is so that someone who is watching this podcast if they want to get into freelancing what are those things that they can focus at this point of time so for tools there are few tools but again in DevOps we have many tools for same yes. tasks as well yes right and uh, if you are working at freelancing, if you have many different clients, the tech stack will always be different. But very common ones are Terraform obviously, mm -hmm. uh, Cloud usually AWS, but again there are also many clients who are shifting to Azure, there are many clients who are using GCP as well, but mostly AWS. Mm -hmm. So Terraform, AWS, obviously Kubernetes, 
uh, I don't, I can't imagine my work without Kubernetes. So there will be very uh, a lot of Kubernetes as well. Uh, also, GitLab these days. Earlier it was Jenkins, but now yeah. there are also companies who use Jenkins as well. So I generally try to convince my client to use either Circle CI or GitLab rather than using Jenkins. So yeah, these are some common tools. Got it. So. Thank you so much. I think I have all my questions answered and these are some of the common things that my subscribers also wanted to understand. I have got the best person and I hope you got the most out of it. Now I will let Nasi ask me questions about open source, but this video will be uploaded as part two on Nasi's channel. Yes. So if you want to know about open source, make sure to check out CloudSham where I'll be asking questions on open source from Abhishek. See you all. I hope you enjoyed this video. Take care.